What do you think the second most powerful emotion in the world is? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about what the most powerful emotion in the world is? I think that most people would agree that the most powerful emotion in the world that has been with us from the beginning of time that will be here past the end of time is love. Love is by far the most powerful emotion in the world. People have literally moved mountains, have accomplished some of the most amazing things over love. It might be love for another, it could be love for themselves, it could be love for humanity. There's all kinds of ways to express love. It could be love for animals, but love is the most powerful force in the world and where at one time we thought that there was no hope to save someone or to save a race or, or to save um, uh, a species of animals or whatever it might be, somehow love came to the forefront and did its thing. Hi, I'm David Essel. So what is the second most powerful emotion in the world. Well, for the past almost 30 years now, I've been studying human emotion and human behavior and working in the world of this, and, and I find it fascinating in my own life first. I will say this is the very first thing I found out about my own life, and then as I've seen in my clients over the past years, is that the second most powerful emotion in the world is denial. Denial. Denial, denial. It's the second most powerful emotion in the world. It is amazing how many years I lived in denial over different addictions that I had. And when I look back at working with people in the world of just addiction recovery, let's say for a moment, almost everyone that came in and still comes into this day or calls me on the phone with help for help with their addiction recovery has been in denial for years. Some of it pretty conscious denial. <laughs> like, yes, I know I have this problem. No, I don't want to fix it. Denial. That's pretty heavy duty denial. But others have justified their behaviors for years because they didn't want to face them. And it's the same thing that happens in relationships. You know, we'll be in relationship for a long time. I mean, I've worked with people that have been married 25, 30, 40, 50 years in absolute denial that their relationship is unbelievably unhealthy. Like they'll just stay together because of the kids. They'll stay together because of money. They'll stay together because they got married and they're supposed to be together. They stay together because, and all this time there's been abuse going on. Many times the woman abusing, emotionally abusing the husband. Many other times the husband emotionally or physically abusing the woman. And we stay because of denial. People have gotten themselves in outrageous debt and more, more financial problems than ever are caused by denial. We deny that there's a problem with our income. We deny there's a problem with our spending. Denial is unbelievably powerful. Um, the denial that surrounds the lack of forgiveness for someone from the past, like we deny that we should forgive this person because they did something so horrific, that denial keeps us stuck in the past. And so when we're looking at our lives and we say, geez, why am I not moving forward? We've got to look at where am I denying reality in my own life with my money, with my spiritual path, with my physical health. Physical health is huge. When, when, we, when we struggle with eating disorders or alcohol or smoking, when we struggle with um, uh, spending, when we struggle with, with anything that has to do with getting ourselves in the hole and we look at where we are right now and we've been this way for a long period of time, most of the reasons why we stay there is because of denial. We don't want to change. We don't want to do the uncomfortable. The uncomfortable meaning leaving something behind, a relationship, a habit of spending, a habit of, um, of well, you've seen the TV on TV hoarding, like we're in denial when we hoard things. I worked with clients in the past that hoarded um, shampoo. And the shampoo was $25, $30 a bottle, and they have like 40 or 50 bottles of shampoo in their house. Bottles of water. There was one person I worked with that had cases and cases and cases. More water than they would ever be able to drink in every room in the house, just all over the place. And you look and you go, okay, look, we live in Florida and there's a chance of hurricanes, but this is a little crazy. But they were in denial that there was a problem. Um, people with anorexia and bulimia, again, denial. Do you see how this goes into every area of life? We'll, we'll go in and into the workplace and I'll be working with people that want to change careers and yet they're afraid to make the big move so they stay in denial. They'll come in and say I want to get help but when it comes to doing the uncomfortable they'll stay where they are. So today, this whole thing today, the purpose of it is to ask ourselves the question where in my life am I in denial? Now the answer to that is usually the area of life that is 
consistently in chaos or drama? Is it around friendships? I mean, am I in denial that the friends that I hang around with are not good and healthy for me? Uh, so is there chaos in there? Is there chaos with my family members? Is there chaos with my body, my physical body? Is there chaos with some type of a substance addiction? It could be pharmaceutical drugs that your doctor gave you that you're in denial about because you said, well, he wouldn't give it to me if I didn't need it, but you're, it's a crutch now. You're not doing anything other than taking that drug for whatever condition it is. There's been lots of people that I've worked with who come in with high blood pressure, um, high sugar levels, all kinds of, of ailments, but they won't change their lifestyle. And so they think that medicine is going to help and they're in complete denial. They don't want to give up their comfort foods. They don't want to give up their drinks. They don't want to give up whatever it is. I mean, you've heard of people that have been diagnosed with lung cancer that continue to smoke. I mean, it's an amazing, powerful force. That's why I'm saying denial is the most incredibly powerful force next to love on the universe. If I can help you, and our courses, our courses on life coaching, our courses on spirituality are all about breaking through denial and getting to reality, look at our courses on talkdavid.com. There might be something there that, that you really do resonate with, or if I can help you as a coach one-on-one -on -one, to see why is it that my relationships or my finances or my physical health or what it, my spirituality it isn't changing. I find a lot of drama there. There's probably some place in denial that we can look at to help move past the denial into reality and then we can take steps to change. All that information is at talkdavid.com. Don't hesitate to send me an email. Share this with friends that are in patterns of struggle because the patterns are always about denial. Maybe we're dating the same type of person and we're denying that we need to change it. That could be a problem and issue but if you do change it the end result changes as well. And don't forget at YouTube here to sign up for the account so every new video we put out goes directly to you first. Okay? Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.